This training video was developed by the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading in the UK and is part of a range of resources aimed at researchers. This video is about the organisation of a data and document store. Introduction. Organising a DDS is really no different from organising files and folders on your own PC. However, it is generally used by several individuals, so it's a good idea to have an agreed structure that all users adhere to. In this video, we will go through some examples and suggestions. Example file structure. Let's start by having a look at an example file structure. At the top level, there are five main folders. General documents, common database, then three folders to reflect the three research areas of the project. Note that here the folder names include a number at the start. This keeps the folders in the order that you choose. We suggest using two digits so you could have up to 99 folders sorted in the order you want or 100 if you start from 00. zero. The general documents folder contains the project proposal, uh, the log frame, theory of change, reports, etc. These are all documents for the project as a whole. The folders for the research areas each contain subfolders and where there are elements expected from each research area there should be subfolders with the same names. For example, each of our research areas, soil component, the MIP component, and landscape component, have subfolders for research protocols, research tools, photos and reports. Each also has a database folder for the data from that particular research area. These folders have different names but all include the word database in the name and all have the same numeric prefix making it easier to find the data. The common database folder at the top level would contain data relevant to the project as a whole, such as farm and demographic data. Under research tools, we have data recording sheets, field presentations, manuals and questionnaires. Reports are divided into monthly reports, MSc theses. Uh, PowerPoint presentations for workshops and published papers. We stress again that this is just an example structure. You and your team should develop your own structure that suits your needs. File names. It is important to give your files meaningful names. The files shown here are examples of what we mean. These are in the general documents folder. The file name states clearly what we will find in the file. You'll notice we also have included a string of eight digits at the end of each file name. This represents the date, four digits for the year, two for the month and two for the day. Thus the project proposal was produced on the 12th of June 2009. You'll also notice there are two theory of change documents. The first is dated the 30th of January 2010 and the second one the 23rd of March 2010. Some people like to keep previous versions of documents like this and with this method of naming the files you can easily see which is the most up to date. Don't rely on the date modified. This sometimes picks up the date a file was moved or copied and you can see in this example uh, this is no help at all to us. Also, if you had any access databases, for example, the date modified changes whenever you open the database file, regardless of whether or not you make any changes. Such naming conventions may seem either obvious or superfluous even, but before we move on, let's see an example of what can happen if naming conventions are not established and agreed on by the whole team. In this folder, the Word document files are all different versions of a document on presenting results. But it is far from clear which version is the most up to date or whether there is any reason for so many versions. 
When you start to organise anything, you can often find things that can easily fit into two or more locations. The same is true of files on your computer. For example, let's assume we have a PowerPoint presentation that's to do with both soils and landscapes. So it fits into the two research areas, the soils and landscapes. It's not to do with the entire project, so we don't want to store it at the project level, but we only want one copy of the file. Currently, it's under the soil research area, and we want a way to record that this is also linked to landscapes. One solution is to use a shortcut link. We right click on the file and we choose create shortcut. We then move the shortcut down to the appropriate folder under landscape component. And here we see the shortcut under PowerPoint for workshops, under reports, under landscape. Now most of us use shortcuts on a daily basis from our desktops, generally to uh, open applications. And what we have demonstrated here is just another use for shortcuts. Getting organised. It is much easier to set up good structures from the outset. But of course, this often doesn't happen and you find yourself with a mess and a mess is hard to organise. Here's a suggestion. Ignore the mess for now. Shut the door on it. We'll call it a backlog. Now set up your structures and systems as though you were starting from scratch. Any incoming documents and files can go immediately into the new structure you have. Once your new system is working, perhaps after a few tweaks, it's time to return to your backlog. Spend a little time each day moving items from your backlog to your new system, even just a few minutes. With all new items going directly into your new system, your backlog can only get smaller until it disappears altogether. Summary. As we said, the examples and suggestions we've shown here are not hard and fast rules for organising your DDS. You may well have alternative structures and systems that work for you and your team. But whatever structure you choose, it should be agreed by the whole team so that everyone knows where to store information and how to find it again.